from in Hollywood. It's the Tom Mikey Show. Oh my God! Oh, here I go! Oh, and now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning again. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Trying to find out from you the following. You, the caller, if you are a caller this hour, you are married to a person, but you believe you should be married to somebody else, an ex-boyfriend, an ex-girlfriend, an ex-husband, an ex-wife, a high school sweetheart. Somebody in your office who's really hot that you don't have the nerve to talk to. Somebody in college that was really hot that you never had the nerve to talk to. Somebody in high school who was really hot that you never had the nerve to talk to. Every day you wake up next to the wrong person. Now, it is not that you are unhappily married uh, because this person is a jerk. It is They are a victim in all of this, okay? They don't even know in most cases that you feel that way. It's you. You decided to marry one person knowing in your heart of hearts you should be married to another. If that's you, call me at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Jake on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? It's an honor to talk to you, man. I know. Uh, I didn't see the show. It just seems really stupid to me to even... But when you played that cut, I always listen to your show. It just sent chills down my spine. Uh, a year ago, I, I found out I had a tumor in my like in my brain, and the doctor said that it may be cancer. And I had been married for three years to like the girl I never really wanted to be with, but my family wanted it for me. So you it, you got married to somebody because your family wanted them to marry, or they wanted you to marry them. Well, I know how you feel about church and religion, and my family is deeply rooted, um, rooted in religion and everything else. And, you know, Do they I also believe things, in arranged marriages? Uh, in, in... No, it's not arranged marriages. It was um, our reverend. It was his daughter. And um, they had, it had been like we've been in that church since we were little kids. And, you know, my dad owns a business, and most of his clients are in the church and everything like that. And so after I broke up with the girl that I really loved out of high school because she went to the Navy, you know, and I started talking to this, the, my current wife now, you know, it was like a match made in heaven in their eyes. So I just went along with it. Hello? And you're going to stick with it? Well, it's, it, it got, what happened was is after all that time and I was diagnosed with the, the tumor, she never really came to even see me. Um, we barely talked. And then uh, my ex called me and talked to me every single day. She was there through the whole ordeal, for the most part. And now I'm with my wife, and I'm you know, for the last few months since then. It's just uh, I don't I don't want to see her. I don't talk to her. I have a fishing pole in my trunk. I don't even go home after work. But you know, it's my uh, I hate to see this person, and I'm not saying anything crazy like I'm. A, I just really would wish she would go away, or you know, or just. But you know, she she. she it's just horrible. I can't be around her. I don't want to look at her. I don't want to touch her. And she has to know this because I've told her I hated her before. You've told your wife you hate her? Yeah, I've told her to her face that I hate her. I got on my space. I put all that stuff up there. I told her I was cheating on her. But this whole facade that goes on in the, the hypocrisy of the church, you, you come on, Tom, you know how that is. 
Yeah, but you're an adult. You don't have to stay in that church, and you don't have to do what your parents say. Yeah, but my family's business is wrapped up in that. And my my dad's told me because I told him that I want to be. I want to. But how is telling that. your wife that you hate her going to help your dad's business? It, no, it doesn't. But he's told me before that if I embarrassed him by doing all this, that he would he would he won't leave me the business. But my your dad life, your dad thinks it's okay that you tell a hater and you post this stuff on well, MySpace. I her, well, I didn't tell him that I told her I hate her. But, you know, well, does it word get back? Doesn't she tell her parents about that? She doesn't say anything. She read, she's completely oblivious. It's like a goddamn robot. Really? I don't. I don't even. T Tom, I'm the second biggest horn dog in the world besides you, and I, I don't touch her. Really? I don't. She, she's completely. She wants to hear nothing I have to say. It's the person that you you tell them you're breaking up with them, and they tell you no. And it's <laughs> what am I going to do? But you never said you were breaking up with her. Well, I, wa I wanted to, who, who wants to be miserable? I would love to be with the person I want to be with, but I can't. I'm trapped. See, well, what am I supposed to do, lose my livelihood? It's the only thing I know in my father's company. Well, you could go to college. Tom, I'm 25 now. You could go to college. But it, it started I mean, this, all is, this is your life you're throwing away. I would rather be just, you know, just anything. And she just, she's completely oblivious. She doesn't even care. And I, I don't even want to, I don't go home. Most of the time I'm just driving around. It's just, you know, she's she's a cold bitch. But you are miserable. You're, cold hell, you're on the air crying in front of four million people. You're miserable. Well, I'm not... I'm not a little bitch. I don't go around crying all the time. But I understand that. I'm not saying you're a little bitch. I'm just saying you're that miserable. You're crying. You're so sad. But well, how would you feel? I... You're being stuck with a, uh, a, a monster. I was a, at the time I could have died. And she and she didn't give a rat's ass to call me or talk to me. And somebody who's going on with their life, and it has been three years before, you know, we even, we even kissed or touched or anything. And Yeah, but... Uh, <laughs> You know, we don't all get businesses from our parents. My father didn't have two nickels to rub together. I had to go out and build my own career. And by the way, I didn't really get going until I was age 25. Yeah, but Tom, you know, I, I'm not... So you would rather not have to go to school, not have to make your own name for yourself, your own reputation, and live miserably with someone you don't love and don't touch. Yeah, Tom, what money? Go to school, what money? You could what go to community. You could go to community college. If I leave her, I'm the monster. I'm the victim. I mean, she's the victim. I'm the monster. They don't care that I wasn't getting calls from her. They don't care about you know what I go through. But you can't worry. Then that means you have to break free from all of these morons. You have to get out of there. You have to get away from your family. You have to get away from your parents specifically. You have to get away from her and her family for your own good. You know, it's easier said than done. No, it, it's, put it this way, it's not as hard as you think. You know, they were, my father didn't talk to me for years at one point, but I have, my two sisters still don't talk to me because I don't do what the family wants and I don't do it the way they say. Well, how do you, well, how do you deal? But your livelihood's not wrapped up with your family. What? But wait a minute. I, my father didn't give me this business. I made it on my own. You don't have to do what I do, but I made my own business, which you could do too. I'm just, you know, it's, you know, it, it's easy talking from the top, looking down, but from the I've bottom. done. I was at the. Do you understand? I was one of four kids in a one-bedroom apartment in the South Bronx when I was a kid. Do you realize we were poor, poor, dirt poor, white trash, the lowest of the low? And do you realize that I left home at 16? And as my father dropped me off at my grandmother's place where I stayed for the next year, he helped me move my things. He put them on the front curb at the, my grandmother's apartment building. And as uh, he pulled away, he said, you'll be back. And I never came back. 
Well, just like... It's just the difference between being a strong individual and being a weak one. Well, I'm not weak. It's just... Then leave. Like, I, oh, how am I supposed to tell her? <laughs> you don't have I've to tell her. her before. I've you don't have I... to tell her. You you tell her with divorce papers. I've told her before. I said, I, I'm not happy. I'm miserable. Half the time, I wish I was dead. You don't have want... to tell her. You tell her with divorce papers. You find a place to live. You When she's not there, you move your stuff there. And then you have an attorney deliver the divorce papers to her. It's that simple. If she doesn't respond, there will be a default judgment against her, and you'll be divorced. And that's it. I'm just... Because all I hear is pray about it. That's everything. He well, does. <laughs> you know, that's a very simplistic answer that religious people tend to give. But the reality is yeah, but that, that praying work. never solved anything. And it, I, I don't want to destroy my, my whole life and my family, but it just, you know, you're right. It's, but, the, it, the, the, but the bottom line is you are miserable. Is it worth it? No. Then it's time to go. There's no other way. There's no other. There's no other way. I've talked to my ex, the the girl, you know, and I don't, I don't know. She's she's coming down next weekend. I I, I kind of know what's going to happen, you know. You don't kind of know. You definitely know. Well, I definitely know. But hang on a second, Paul. What did you want to say to Jake here? Hey, Jake. How you doing? Hey. Uh, there are a couple of points I'd like to make with you. One. If your parents don't care enough that this girl didn't give you the time of day while you were in the hospital, I I can't imagine your your parents are are, are worth uh, working so hard to stay with this girl for anyway. Secondly, if this job were so wonderful, you'd have enough saved up to where you wouldn't have to worry about where is the college money coming from. So I'd have to say daddy's job isn't necessarily all that wonderful to begin with, you being 25 and not having any money. And secondly, it doesn't sound to me, and I don't want to put down your parents, but it doesn't sound to me like they're really thinking about what's best for you at all. They're really well, just kind of thinking about what, you know, what's best for the well, relationship. Well, yeah, it's easy to sit over there on the phone and talk a bunch of stuff. You know, my dad runs his own business, and I get paid well enough. And, and well, good for him, and, and good for you, but the, the point yeah, is... Yeah, it's going to be mine saying, one day, and that's what I'm saying. saying. But after that, you don't, know what it's like to, you don't know what it's like to be stuck in a religious, a religious, freak, religious freak thing where you grew up in the church your whole life, and all these people seriously just believe all this nonsense constantly thrown. Well, I love air. it. You don't even need me. You just said, you just said the word that fits perfectly, freak. That's all you need to know, baby. That's all you need to know. I mean, they're obviously it's religious. It's I have... They don't give a damn about your happiness. All they care about is what they think is best religiously. And obviously, you're incredibly unhappy. And they don't give a damn about that. You're going to lose your job if you get rid of this woman that obviously has shown she doesn't care for you. Okay? If I mean, how how could people treat you that way? If they're going to treat you that way, how much are they really worth to you? I mean, yeah, great. Daddy gives you a job, and that's a wonderful thing. But the thing is, yeah, if, daddy, ass, so if daddy's willing like to fire you because you get rid of this bitch, then um, I'm not sure how great I feel about daddy because daddy should be looking after you first. She should be second. Daddy should be looking at you religions, first. All these religion things, they're all the women are the victims and everything else. He doesn't care that she's a cold bitch. He doesn't care if she's a freaking robot. He doesn't have to sit there and sleep with her. He didn't go through it. So how would right. you know? But But you told him, you have told him, and your mom, I assume, based on what you said, you have told them that, that, that she didn't visit you while you were in the hospital, that, that, that she is a cold bitch. You've told them this. Yeah, they didn't get to experience it themselves, but you've told them this, and you're their son. And if they can't take your side at all, then, I, boy, man, I'm not sure. Well, can, worth... You know what? I'm not going to sit here and say anything's guaranteed. Yeah, I know what I'm supposed to do. And maybe after this weekend or next weekend, which, you know, when I see my friend, maybe things will change. But I hear you, but you've offered, you've offered the impression that if you get rid of her, it also gets rid of your job. That's the impression you've given us.
Oh, no, and, that's the truth. You don't know what it's like being trapped. And that's, I, well, I, I, whether I know what it's like or not, well, let me put it this way. It's, a not, it's not a way I would ever choose to live. I have more pride than that. If my daddy tells me I'm going to lose a job because I do, because I make a decision that I feel is right for me, well, then I have to tell my daddy, you can take your job and shove it. I'm not saying that I'm going to give up on my dad and never visit him during Christmas and what have you. I'm not going to stop loving my mom and dad. But if my mom and dad are going to dictate the way I live my life, there's no job worth that. Well, that's There's what no you job said right there. That. A job, job. It's a livelihood. This is this business has been in my family for years. I, I you understand that. Like? But you're 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 discounting your own abilities. You 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 seem to believe that that job is all you're capable of. If if you can't have that job, your life is over. Well, no family and, means something. And there's the the the. the a job was never created like that. Never in the history of man. There's never been a job that uh, that if you lose that job, your life is over. Because guess what? Everybody that loses a job loses a job goes to another one, including Tom Likas. Tom Likas leaves one radio station, he goes to another one. Now you may you may say that to a point that's a lateral move, and so he used the training he already had, and and you may need uh, quote unquote retraining to try something new, but. Uh, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. You're 25. You act like because you're 25, um, it's too late for you to try anything new. You're a young guy. I'm 40 years old. If I had to try something new tomorrow, guess what? I'd still kick ass at it. And you do what you have to do. That's what you do. Uh, Mike, you're on the Tom Likas show with Jake. What do you want to say? Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much. I just want to tell this guy he needs to grow some balls, man. You need to get out of there, dude. I, I'm, I'm only no, I got 20. they will be in your girl's mouth, homie. You don't know me. No, dude. I'm only 20 years old, but at 16 years old, I was living in a household with an abusive father, uh, a horrible mother, and they were very religious, all that kind of stuff. I got out of there, dude. I left the I left the state. I mean, I left California, and I moved by myself at 16 years old to New York, dude. By myself, no family, nothing for three years. Supported myself, got myself a career, finished high school. I came back to California. I have my own apartment now, dude. You just gotta you gotta get away from that stuff, man. It's not it's not good, dude. You're only 25 years old. I'm only 20, but you know what, dude? You can still you can still go to trade school. You can still go to college. You can still do something. Anything to get out of that, dude. You yeah, don't need to I've have been, your father hold your hand, man. Place. On, I've been working on that place on an unofficial basis since I was 13, 14 years old, since I could. So when something is different from talking about, you know, something I've been doing for 11 years and all of a sudden have it go away and start over with nothing. What do you do, by the way? It's a, we own a diner. You own a diner? Yo, you can you can go open up your own place, dude. You can go get a business What money? Degree. What money? With the, with the hopes and dreams, or you want to be like my family? I just pray to Jesus, and a diner yeah. comes from the air. Here's one thing: I'm like Tom Likas here. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in religion. That stuff doesn't get you anywhere. Well, Praying doesn't saying. get you anywhere. They do. Yeah, they tell me to pray for everything. No, and everything dude, that don't get better. you anywhere. Well, that's no, for that's people that are so, weak. Religion is so for people that I'm are weak. I'm not going to pray to Jesus, and twenty dollar bills are going to come out of my ass. No, so I'm going to need something to leave with. No, if you're so in a religion, they're going to take more money away from you than when you're not in it, dude. They pass around that little collection plate for you. They're gonna take that money away from you. Don't even, don't even get involved in religion. Don't pray about it. Just do your own thing, dude. Get out of that, man. If you're not happy, you only live once, man. If you're not happy, then why are you doing it? You know, you can, you can go to trade school. You can get onto some program with the government where they can help, you know, with loans and things like that to help you go through school, help support yeah, and they, you. And they all lead to debt. The one thing I have, nah. done, the number one thing you can do is keep your credit clean. And I've kept it. Dude, I kept my credit. I have my credit is. Perfect. I'm 20 years old. My credit is perfect, man. I mean, I I had to live on about three credit cards at one time when I was in New York because it's getting expensive. But you know what, dude? I moved back out here, back to California. I'm away from my family still. I still don't talk to them, which is a sin. You know, I hate I hate not having a family to talk to. But dude, you got to do what you got to do, man. And I I live great now. I mean, I have my own apartment. I went to trade school. I'm a I do heating and air conditioning. And I'm I'm making a living for myself, man. At 20 years old, and you know you're 25, you can still do that kind of stuff. You have more opportunity than I have, and more uh, more than I had. Well, I'm not gonna sit here and try to you know bitch about stuff because you you're right. But you know it's just it's it's different things for different people. I can be strong in a lot of aspects of my life. You know I could work I'm the I can work my ass off in that diner, but you know 
at the end of the day. All right. Uh, thank you for the call, Mike. Let me get Lori in here. Lori, what do you want to say to Jake? Wow. Oh, my God. Where do I start? If your diner is such a wonderful place and it has made so much money, then you ought to be able to go out on your, um, your what do you call it? The name alone, and be able to start your own place. Well, I, gotta, I, I, can't... I make enough money to get a date with you, sweetheart. That's all I know. Well, unfortunately, I don't like whining pee-pee asses, so that would never work out, would it? Now, you know what? You you like this. You need to quit. You need to just deal with it. There is life I'm after sure. divorce. All these people can sit over there and judge. When you're oh, I can't there... judge. I can judge. I uh, totally agree with Tom. Uh, you don't need to be married. You need to... I've been... I'm like Tom. I've made that mistake. You know what? I started after my first divorce, and I never took even alimony. I, you know, my, I told them, I don't even want money for you for the tears. I don't need this. I don't have the face. I don't need this. I can take care of myself. And you know what? I had to start school. I had to be back to school and get a teaching credential. And you know what? I take care of myself now. But did I sit there going, wah, especially a supposed man going, wah? Oh, my gosh. Good Lord, you know? <laughs> Lori, thank you for the call. Jake, Jake hung up there. He couldn't take any more. Uh, good luck, Jake. Huh. All right, in case you're just tuning in, here's what's going on. You, you the caller, you're married to the wrong person. They may be a wonderful person, a great person, a nice person, but you didn't marry the person you really wanted. An ex-boyfriend, an ex-girlfriend, an ex-wife, an ex-husband, somebody from school, somebody you ever had the guts to talk to. If you're married to one person, but you think you should be married to another, call me now. Tom. Like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. So, for you, you only get from woman you sex, and that's it. Yes, because that's what women are good for. Oh, my God. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. Elena on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Elena? Hello. Hello. How are you? Hello. Hello. I'm good. So, um, I, I am married, and I had a fling on the side. Been married a long time, and uh, found someone that really, really floated my boat. And uh, but it can't be with him. So I'm just just gonna hang in there and tough it out. Why? Oh, the divorce papers are like in progress. You know, it's just a matter of time. It's just, uh, you know, wrapping up, you know, tying up the loose ends and then kicking it to the curb. Now, you know, many people I know, including an ex-wife of mine, who have had affairs, once they are free to do whatever they want, the relationship ends. The excitement is over. Aren't you afraid that that's what's going to happen here? I, I, I don't even have a relationship with this person. They're busy going to school and working, and, you know, they have a life of their own, and, you know, kind of let me know that. You're, it says here you're 48 years old. He's going to school. How old is he? Um, He's working on a on a master's degree. How old is he? He's 42. 42. Yeah. So you, you don't even want, but you say you're in love with him, but there's no relationship. You know, that's the way it is sometimes. And, um, you know, people make choices and uh, they make decisions. And, um, you know, you just have to kind of roll with the punches, you know. The best fish is still uncocked. So you're going to continue with this less than satisfying relationship? It fits my needs for right now. After having a less than satisfying marriage? You're going to top it off with a less than satisfactory relationship. It isn't even a relationship, according to you. No, no, no. My, my marriage was was actually pretty good. In the last couple of years, it went to heck in a handbasket, so it's, it's done. But, but that's only because you started having an affair with somebody else. Are you kidding? Isn't it? This is Mr. Affair USA. Okay, He's in another country, 
having an affair. Oh, so he had, he was having an affair, so then you started having an affair. He wasn't around, so, you know, hey, cats away, mice will play. Mm -hmm. so, you know, I mean, he wasn't around, and he didn't care, and that was that. So I just did some other things, you know. I expanded my options. <laughs> Boy. You know. So you don't care if you have a relationship or not. Um, you know, you're a very interesting person in that um, I really disagree with a lot of things. Your woman-hating stuff is just unbelievable. But, you know, don't shoot the messenger. And a lot of stuff you say is really true. And uh, I'm not looking for anything. I totally agree with you about that. You know, I'm not looking for nothing. I got my own place. I have my own car. I have my, you know, you know, my financial situation, blah, blah, blah. I'm not looking for nothing. But if something good comes along, hey, <laughs> you know, I will uh, behave accordingly. <laughs> Look at you. All right, Elena. Pretty wicked. Can you take me out, um, African uh, village? African tribal style. Here you go. Baninge, 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 so penza. Baninge, 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 so penza. Kota lenenge, asika mama. Boya kota lenenge, asika. Tom Likas. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. I just started listening to you yesterday, man. What is the most important thing that you've learned here so far? That I ain't got to take no girl out to dinner to get some. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show from Hollywood. All right. You, the caller, are married to the wrong person. You believe you should be married to somebody else. An ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend, ex-wife, ex-husband. Someone you saw sitting across from you at the DMV. Who knows who? 1-800-5-800-TOM. It's Renee on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement? There's a statement. Hello, Tom. How are you? I'm great. Great. So, yeah, I just got into my car and heard your question, and um, I've listened for quite a while. I never called in, and wow, that's just my predicament right there, pretty much. Tell us the story. Well, I'm married. I've been married for a little over six years. We've been together for about 12. We have a five-year-old daughter, um, currently in marriage counseling, um, and... I've currently reconnected with an old boyfriend from high school. That really helps the marriage counseling, by the way. That's yeah, it great. it does. I find it's really productive. Um, it really helps a lot. Um, Why do you even bother with marriage counseling if you're doing that? I don't know. It's wasting know. your time and your money. Why do you even do it? Well, it's more like I should cut off the communication with the former person. Which you're not going to. No. So why are you wasting your time and money sitting in a therapist's office? Probably like most of the other listeners or callers would say is because of the child. But you're not going to fix it. You don't think it's worth saving ever? I don't. You, the only way you could save it is if you told the truth in there, which you won't. Correct. I, I, uh, by the way, you're speaking to somebody who's been through seven years of therapy, and I have done couples counseling, okay? Okay. And I'm telling you, if you don't tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth in there, it doesn't work. How about if I tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth except that? Nope, because that wouldn't be the whole truth. I know, I know. You know, I think I could even tell that, and I think my husband would still stick around. Well, the point is that first you would have to tell it. Yeah, I know. I mean, look, I think your choices are them. your choices are as follows. One, tell the truth in there. Or two, stop going to therapy. Yeah, I agree. So what do you think you'll do? Probably tell the truth and see where it leads me. Who is the other person? It's just an old, old boyfriend from high school. He lives in another state. 
and he found me on the old classmates. There's that classmates dot com. Yeah. Good, yeah, it's useful. And we've been communicating and texting and calling for about six months. Mm-hmm. So we haven't seen one another. Right. Yet. But, but you don't yeah. even know what he looks like today. No, I do. We've exchanged pictures. Mm-hmm. And is this a sexual thing or what is it? We talk. We we joke in a very sexual No, no, manner. no. Your desire for this person is sexual. Do you really love him? The other person? Yes. I did at one time. He was like my first love. <laughs> but now, you were in high school. I'm sorry? But you were in high school. What did exactly. you know? Exactly. Now I think of him more of a friend and a companion, and not companion, but someone that's gotten me through a rough time. Um, you know, when I got nothing from my husband on Valentine's Day, he at least sent me a text message. Ooh, he must have spared yeah. no expense. Yeah, exactly. It was super sweet. Um, so no, I don't. I don't think that I'm in love with him at this point in time. He has a wife and kids as well, and. So I, I consider him more of a friend. So it's not really that I would want to leave my husband for him. It's just he's in the picture. But you world. wouldn't be trying to uh, coax him to do something he shouldn't do, would you? Who? The other guy. He's well, married. Don't... You say he's happily married. I don't know how happy he is. He's married. Yeah, but, but he's saying... chatting with you. I know. That's what he keeps saying. So he's not as happy as you want to think. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he's happy or unhappy. I think he's bored and middle aged, and you know, just sitting in the middle of Nebraska. Oops, shouldn't have said that. But um, and how did know, he? Now, by the way, I know you're not from Nebraska. I'm amazed you've been able to go four and a half minutes without telling us where you're from. But I know you're not from Nebraska. So how did you no. meet a guy from Nebraska? I'm sorry. How did you meet a guy from Nebraska? How did he get to Nebraska? That's where I'm from. You're from Nebraska? Yeah. Where are your yeah. parents from? Nebraska. Why do you have an East Coast accent? Because I'm married to a New Yorker? I don't know. Oh my goodness. I don't think I don't think I That's have an see that answers the question. Why didn't you tell us where you were from the first thirty seconds of the call? Because you're not really from there. Yeah, I'm not really from anywhere. I moved a lot as a kid. I'll put it that way. Military brat? No, just my parents were screwed up. I see. So. Looks like it didn't skip a generation. Yeah, I know. Apple didn't fall far from the tree. Right. Yeah. So you weren't always in love with this guy. It's just something that, uh, by going that god-awful classmates.com. By the way, if I were ever, ever to be in another relationship, uh -huh. classmates.com, I would shut it down. You would no contact i would i would be spying on your computer and i would just shut you down if you're on classmates.com wouldn't be allowed no, that thing would not be allowed so dangerous. that thing is is poison I know, poison fun, but yeah oh, i just wanted to see where everybody in high school went mm. i just wanted to see what happened to the head of the science club yeah, I was very shocked when I get this email all of a sudden six months ago. Oh, look who's thinking about me. Mm. You, know? Uh, you know, I think we've been just a great ego boost for one another. Honestly, me and this guy, and that's it. You know, just, oh, someone else is thinking about me other than the person that I'm married to that can't stand me right now. Yeah, but you understand that each of you, the, the, the two of you, you and the other guy, other than your husband, yeah, you really have nothing between the two of you. Nothing. Oh, exactly. I know that. Nothing. We both know we're playing a game. That it's just a little game, and we're, you know, on kind of a friend level, I guess. That we, in that we. You're want not to even friends. Together. If no. if if he came to L.A. on business, you'd meet him at his hotel and you'd ride him like a pony. But at the end of it, you wouldn't be <laughs> friends, or you wouldn't be boyfriend and girlfriend, or you wouldn't be having an affair. You'd ride him like a pony, and then uh, he'd get himself back to the airport. Yeah, probably. Because you're bored and he's bored. Yeah, I I would have to agree with you. Why, and why, again, did you marry somebody you're really not in love with? Because it was a safe way, I believe. I, I love him, but more like, like a friend or a brother. Yeah, but you say it was safe. It, 
it just felt very safe. He's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. See, that's who they marry. I know. I never want to be the nice guy they marry. I want to be the jerk that that's they sit up at night having fantasies about oh, after I've uh, misused them and abused them. Yeah. I mean, you realize... Because I dated you, Tom. That's why I married the man that I married. That wouldn't, you know what, dear? <laughs> I, I know you're... men like you. I uh, see. I, I knew it wasn't me specifically. It could very well not have been. specifically. Of course not. Yeah. That could but, still be, because I'm not in Nebraska. No, no, neither am I. Not anymore. I, I could give you a good crack in the ass and uh, give you something <laughs> else to sit up about at night. <laughs> I bet you could. I'll tell because. you what. And then after that, yes. you, you could join my other, my other uh, ex... Uh, Boinks on uh, our website. It's uh, oh, ass. Yeah, it's assmates dot com. Nah, <laughs> sounds like a place I would fit in. Yeah. Uh, but yes, exactly. Thank you for that. I thought it was time to take the break. I guess it's not. I was looking at the clock. For some reason, I was under the impression it was time to take a break. You know, my job is to get the big punchline and then go to the break. And I thought I had the big punchline there. And then got another four minutes. <laughs> By the way, when I press the uh, break button, now I'm just getting this humming on the air. Ah, there it goes. <laughs> 1-800-ASSMATES.COM, you. That's right. Oh, it's already taken. <laughs> Dean's already checked with uh, Network Solutions. Ashmates.com was already taken. one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. <laughs> Let's say hi to, uh, oh, Ben. Ben on the Tom Like His Show. Ben went away. At the last second, he dropped away. Uh, Douglas on the Tom Like His Show. Son. How are you? I'm doing okay. I'm just uh, I'm just flipping through uh, assmates.com here. I need the, I need the web address for that one. <laughs> I just gave it to you. It's assmates.com. Dot com. Okay, that'll work. <laughs> yes. I need some advice from you. Okay. First time, in a long time, been listening to you since my dad turned me on to you, and uh, man, I, I live I live by your teachings. Sounds good to me. But as of January, I got married. Twenty nine years old. Why'd you do that? You know, I don't know, Tom. I, uh, geez, man, I lived a life. I never had a girlfriend, kept it simple, you know, and hit him and quit him. And then this chick came along, and she just, I mean, I, I don't know, man. I think it's because she started buying me cars. She started buying you cars, and it was yeah. true love. Yeah, I think I think that's what I, she bought my love. Unbelievable. How much did your love cost? Uh, an expedition and a Silverado. That's it? That's it. It was cheap. My love costs a lot more than that. Yep, yep. Well, anyways, I, uh, you know, married her. We went on our honeymoon, and I found myself wishing I was there with anybody but her. I'm listening. So I, I don't know how to get out of this now. Well, I probably mean, I get not to uh, probably load up the expedition and drive off is what you got to do. <laughs> Yeah, but there's money involved here. I own my own business, and I'm not sure. Did you start the business after you got married? Uh, no. No, 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 no. Well, you need to see an attorney is what you need to do. Right. And you need to find out what the implications are for your business. Right. But no, it, it, is, it, is it such a unique business that you couldn't be duplicated? Uh, I just, it's a custom autom automotive business. Well, you could start another one of those. Yeah. Just change the name. Different name, keep the mailing list, let everybody know you've uh, relocated. Right. I mean, it's, right. it's it's not like you came up with the idea for, uh, you know, the iPod or something. I mean, it's not that unique. Yeah, no. Not, nothing, nothing exclusive. Right. Nothing exclusive. Another question, I have one more question for you. Why is it I have found, I mean, part of the reason that has got me thinking this way, when a woman, woman sees a wedding ring, they hit on you twice as hard. Oh, that's definitely true. Because women want what they can't have. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show. 95.5.